Hello everybody, welcome back to episode number two of our 5PD coding callout series tutorial thing. I never know what to call these anymore, I just say random things and that comes into a series. Anyway, uh, we are going to actually code our first callout today and upload it into our game and make sure everything's working. In order for us to do this, we're actually going to use the example mugging call from the 5PD API GitHub. And you can find that at the link. I'll leave it in the description. So we're going to actually code this. And I'm going to go piece by piece and explain what each one does. And we'll go from there. So this is assuming you have your workspace set up like we did in the last video. Episode number one where we imported this, uh, the dependencies, I'm sorry, and got everything ready. So we're going to start off from where we were in the last video. And we're going to go ahead and code this, upload it to our server, make sure it works. And then we will actually start getting into custom callouts and making our own callouts in the next video. We're just going to do an example callout in this video so you can kind of see the format and I ex can explain what's going on before we get into the more advanced things later on. So first thing I'm going to do is actually delete the class it gave us. I don't like using the default classes. I like creating my own. So we're going to go ahead and delete class 1.cs. And we're going to go over to where we see YouTube Tutorial 1 here, right click, press add, or actually the YouTube Tutorial 1 at the top, press add, uh, didn't do that right, it is the second one, add class or interface. And we're just going to name this whatever our uh, call is going to be, so it is going to be mugging, so we'll type in mugging. And you can see it is now a public class mugging in here. And we're going to do a thing before we actually type any code in here is we're actually going to define this as a callout class. So what we're going to do is you're going to do public class mugging dot dot callout. And it's going to automatically import the callout API, or you can just type it yourself using callout API. And then you're going to do brackets up here, callout properties, and you can always autofill. It does autofill half the time for you. This will be your callout name. So we're going to say mugging test. And then you're going to do a uh, comma, the author's name. So for us, it's BJD development. The version number, which is 0.01 .01 or whatever your version number of your callout is. And then the probability, high, medium, low. For testing, we'll just make it high, but you would want to adjust this to whatever it is for your um, type of thing. So if you want it to be a uh, realistic call out where it's like a bank robbery, the probability of that would be low, clearly, because bank robberies don't seem to happen every day. Um, so we're going to do one more thing before we actually get into the public class itself down here, is we're going to define the suspect and the victim. So in order to do this, we are going to do ped suspect victim just like this all right so clearly i am an idiot so what i have to do is actually move this ped suspect victim into the public class mugging i forgot that we actually do everything inside of here so i'm going to actually open this up a little so you can see there is no more errors you can see call out probability and stuff and you can just delete this extra call out thing over here i do apologize for that um i will cut out the part where i messed up in here anyway um, so then we are actually going to define the callout. So you're going to do public mugging because that's the name of our class and just make the little bracket thing and do down. So it looks like this, and this is where we're going to describe our callout. So for us, we're going to make it a random spawn. So we're going to do random, um, make sure you, you don't have to, you make sure you spell random correctly. And then I'm going to do R and D as the definer here. And then it's going to be a new random. And what this means is it's going to select a random point from what we're going to define here. So we can do float offset x equals random dot next 100 and let's say 700. So you don't really need to know what this means at all. It pretty much means it's going to be spawning within this location of the random selection we're going to get. Um, and that will allow you to go ahead and spawn it in a random location on the map, depending where your player is. So now that we have defined our floats and offsets and everything, you're going to do int base. And then in here, you're going to get world.get next position on street. Make sure not to use sidewalk. Sidewalk will break 5PD and cause issues. You'll do game.playerped.get offset position. Then you're going to do a new vector3 offset x, comma, offset y, comma, zero. That's all you have to do. And you can see that it has non, no errors or anything here. Random is erroring, and I'm not exactly sure why that is erroring. Um, I will look into that momentarily. But you can see this has been created. So pretty much what this is saying is when the callout is initiated, it will get the next position near the street of the player within 100 and 700 in terms of location-wise. And then it will get the offset position of this 
with this and it will spawn the call out there. So this means it won't spawn the call out right in front of the player, but rather a little bit far away so you don't have an issue with this. And I think that comes in handy quite a lot. You can expand these distances, lower them, whatever you want, or you can actually define locations on the map using vector points and get them to uh, spawn at those locations itself under different departments. And we'll go over that in a future tutorial where we get more advanced into this and figure it all out. And once again, I'm an idiot. You just have to add the word new in front of random here and you can see that error goes away. I do apologize for that. I am running on very low energy today. Just finished a 2000 word essay. So a little tired and um, out of it. But anyway, we can now define our callout name and everything. So our callout name, you can just do short name and then you're just gonna do short name space equals and then the name in quotation marks and then the ending uh, bracket. So what you wanna say is this is our callout name. So mugging test or something then you can do the call out description and this is what appears inside of the mdt and stuff when players see the message and we're going to do the same thing and you can say this is a call out test for a mugging or something whatever you want to say and then you're going to do response code which is going to be what appears in the color so if it's response code one there will be uh i believe a white color if i remember correctly code two orange code three red i may be wrong about the uh, colors but don't worry about that and then you're going to do the start distance and this is going to be by default 120 f which is um a value of how far around from the player it is when the caller actually initiates the on start um part which will be coding momentarily you can set this to whatever you want depending on how far away you want the player to be um, from the call and that will actually start the call so the next thing we're going to do is actually create a, the uh, on accept method or the like a starting method which allows you to dedicate what uh, pegs you are spawning and how you're spawning them and how the events take place and everything so what we're going to do is we're going to do a public a sync void uh, override task actually um, and this is going to be int and you can see it's already fall it's already auto filled in there for us um, instead of auto filling I'm actually gonna type it out because sometimes it doesn't uh, type it out correctly for us so I'm gonna have to manually type this and you may get an error with a sync just ignore it that's just a warning it's not a big deal and then you want to do on accept just at the top to dedicate that this is when this was what's gonna take place when the player accepts the call out and in this case, we're actually going to define the suspect that we've defined up here at the beginning. And it's going to be, we're going to do await spawn ped, which is actually going to spawn them. And we're going to get a random ped. Now, 5PD has this uh, get a random ped thing very useful because you don't have to define this uh, ped hash or anything or get it from a string list. They already have this built in and they eliminated all the animals and stuff from it as well. So we're just going to get a random ped. And we're just going to literally copy and paste this for the victim because we want to get a, a random ped for the victim at the same location. If you wanted them to spawn a few blocks over or something, you can just add plus one, something like that would uh, adjust their position in spawning. Then we're going to do suspect dot uh, always keep task. So what this means, and make sure to set this to tr equals true, is what this means is if something like a gunshot or something happens, um, it will go ahead and keep them doing whatever they're doing with you define rather than the game defines. And you want to do block permanent events too. And you're going to do the exact same thing for um, the victim as well. Always keep task equals true and uh, suspect uh, dot or uh, victim dot uh, block permanent events as well equals true. And that is all we're going to put for here. Now, if you wanted to give them a weapon or something, you could either do that in the int or in the on start. I recommend doing it in the on start just so it appears when the player arrives rather than at the beginning. Now we're going to actually do the on start. So we're going to do another public override void. And this one is called on start. Make sure you do on start correctly. And it is a ped and player. So just define those as well before you actually do anything. Um, and in here, we're going to do base.onStart. And this is going to define when the player arrives, this is going to happen. So when the player arrives within our 120 start distance here, the suspect is going to get a weapon. So suspect.weapons.give. And we're going to do weapon hash. And you can give them a weapon. For our example, why don't we give them a dagger? Why not? Uh, we're going to give them one of them. And it's going to be true and true. So what this means is... Um, your ammo count is one, so they only have one dagger. They're not going to have a hundred. You would want to change this if it's like a, 
uh, ammo or a weapon count or something. Should it be equipped at this current time? It should, because you are mugging someone, you should have it. And if it's ammo loaded, can it, does it have ammo? This is mainly for guns, but I would just set it to true anyway. Then we're going to actually give the suspect a task. So we'll do suspect.give task or task, suspect that that task and we're gonna fight against and we're gonna fight him against the victim so we're gonna make him fight against the victim and we're gonna give the victim a task to react and flee from the suspect just like that that's all we have to do we are done and you can get rid of this extra blank space and just organize the class a little by keeping the lines even and this is we've just created our mugging test callout to build this test callout make sure to just go up to build press build solutions You'll see it is loading and built. We are in our debug mode up here. So if you wanted it to be a release, it doesn't really do any difference. You just switch over to release, build it again. It just builds it into a different folder. To find the folder, you right click on the main project, press show in Explorer. It will go ahead and open up in an Explorer like this. Click YouTube tutorial one or whatever yours is named. Bin, release or debug, depending what you built to. I built to release. And you can see YouTube tutorial one.dll is our um, file, but you can see it's not a net.dll which it requires. So in order to make it a net.dll, come back into your folder, right click the project, press properties, make sure you're actually right clicking the project rather than the uh, file itself, click properties, and change the assembly name to YouTube tutorial onenet Press OK and just rebuild your project once again. And you can see now in the folder, it is now a net.dll, which R5M inside of 5PD requires you to run. So we can go into our resource folder, 5pd callouts delete any other callouts you have in here to test or you can use the debug menu for me it's easier to delete all the callouts then you can see it's in here go ahead and start up your 5m and your 5m server and we're going to test out and see if our callout has worked so let's hop into the game and i'll be right back all right so we have get we have gotten into our server i'll switch over to 5p 5m cam so you can actually see inside of 5m easier um, if you press F8, you will see this menu appears, and you can see Mugging Test 0.0.1 .0 by your name has been loaded. So you can see this has loaded successfully, and that's how we know our callout has loaded with the 5PD callout. Press F11, go on duty, and you can see that callout will go ahead and spawn right away. We'll press yes to accept it, and we're going to actually go to location and see what is happening and see if it's working based off of what we have uh, designed. So we are going to get off this road, and we're actually going to go respawn to the callout. It will say there will be a little bit of a yellow line once you get down to the actual road since we are underneath a random road and cliff there's actually going to be no yellow line right now but once we get on the road you'll see it now is appearing in the bottom left hand corner a yellow yellow line which will lead us to our destination so now that we already have our yellow line we are going to respond to our destination um and we're just going to head over there just slowly um one thing i will showcase i don't think uh yes okay so i don't have an admin uh system set up on my local host right now but if you did the call out description would appear in their mdt and i'll showcase that in a future video um i just redid this install for the newest version so i do apologize i don't have everything set up and working currently um so we're gonna head over here and we're just gonna go and see if the call out has spawned successfully now we didn't add any um blips or anything to the victim or suspect so i actually have to find where they are um which we may want to do in a future video oh here we go so here we go so we have our suspect which is chasing the uh victim over there clearly is reacting and fleeing so if we go ahead and stop here um i'm gonna punch this guy so he'd actually okay so he's now fighting me um uh, he didn't have his dagger so oh 5m crashed how fun that is um but anyway that happens sometimes if this ever happens just report at the 5m this isn't really a issue with um uh, 5PD, more an issue with uh, 5M itself. So what I'm going to do actually right now to just highlight how you can add a blip is you can go in here on the int or the on start. I recommend putting an on start. Just do suspect.add blip or uh, add, I think it's blip.add, uh, attack blip, that's it. Suspect.attack blip and then victim.attack blip. That will just attack the blip to e both the victim and the uh, suspect and i'm going to change it from a dagger to a knife just to make it a little easier rebuild the project go ahead and drag it into your callouts folder or copy and paste it whatever you want to do there we go and you can either restart your server which is what i'm actually going to do or you can go ahead and type restart 5pd in the console 
and go ahead and log back in and test it once again. One thing I would recommend doing when you are doing these types of um, videos or like these types of callouts, which is what I meant to say. I'm so tired today. I apologize. Um, when you're doing these types of callouts, make sure to bug fix a lot before releasing them on uh, the GTA Police Mods website where you can download community made callouts just so you don't, uh, you know, other people aren't going to have issues with it and everybody has um, a unique and fun time without having to debug because we've had a lot of callouts recently who have actually had problems in terms of getting callouts working on their servers because people have not updated to the latest API version or something has gone wrong and uh, it broke the callout scripts and stuff. So make sure to update every time a update with the API comes out. Oh, there so we go. So you can see the blips are actually working now. The suspect now has a knife and they are now running away from each other. So you can see the blips on the minimap work. Very cool. So uh, we will go after the suspect and make them put their hands up. Oh, they're coming after us now. All right. Well, that went well. Um, so yeah, make sure you have everything working and stuff before you release it over on the 5PD, um, forums, and hopefully this has taught you how to create callouts and stuff. You do not need any blip removing scripts or anything with the newest version of 5PD. Just make sure you are adding the blips. They will be removed automatically by 5PD itself on the end of the call. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Noodles. Hopefully you're having a great day today, and I will see you in the next video tomorrow.